Welcome back, everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from VLS, and you are watching Open. Thank you for joining us. Hey, um, our last guest is an engineer for the U.S. Air Force, and he joins us uh, from Dayton, all the way from Dayton, Ohio. We call it Ohio OH10 to speak about the fatherhood and finances and uh, the release of his two new books, With Father's Love, With the Father's Love, and uh, Financial Freedom. Doing nothing is an option. I was going to say doing nothing is not an option, but doing nothing is an option. So please welcome to the show, Dr. Edmund Moore. Dr. Edmund H. Moore, welcome. Hey, well, thank you, Dr. Bob Lee, and happy and happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. <laughs> yeah. And a healthy, prosperous one. You know, you're speaking about, you have that book out, Financial Freedom. Let's talk about that one first. Um, how did you come about that? Financial Freedom. I was actually this supposed to be a, a jointly author book with my best man from my wedding, yeah. uh, Richard Napier Sr. Uh, and he unfortunately died uh, in January of uh, last year. So everybody told me to, to finish the book, which yeah. I did. And uh, so that's that's how the book came about on financial freedom. One of the things we know that uh, research has shown that uh, about the, that African Americans or Black folks have about one eighth the wealth of the white what white families have, and the trends are that in by I think it's twenty thirty we have have zero wealth as a country, yeah. and we know as a community we cannot do anything if we don't have any financial wealth. Yeah, and you know how to fly. You're in the Air Force. <laughs> yeah. you know you know how to get it to where it needs to go. And then you have another book, uh, uh, um, Doing Nothing is an Option. How did you come? That, that is a financial book. The financial the book is called <laughs> Financial Freedom, Doing Nothing is an Option. Oh, and, okay. and the reason I put Doing Nothing as an Option uh, was that is because that is what most of us do. Yeah. We don't do anything to, uh, to, to, to help our financial... Uh, to build up our finances or to pass along the generation to uh, uh, finance to our next generation. And one of the biggest well. things I told my daughter is that if you're 18 years old or older, you need to have a will. So you can start there. There you go. Now you come, you've come through some things in the beginning when your daughters were younger. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that story. Uh, so after 15 years of, of marriage, my wife uh, filed for divorce, and I wanted my daughters to know who I was. And so one of the things I started doing was I started writing a letter to them each each uh, week on various topics. Of course, the first one was, I will always love you. So they will always know their father loved them. You weren't able to see them? Oh, yes, I was. Uh, fortunately, we got 50-50 custody. Yeah. of the children, which is a blessing. Some fathers, they don't get custody at all. Yeah. And uh, so I was able to see them. But at the same time, I was able to share some advice with them, tell them a little fact told about my life and uh, and and share a little nugget with them as well. You said they going to know me. <laughs> what was that? Oh me. I'm your father. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the things that you You've written to them, if you don't mind me asking. I wrote to them a lot about uh, finances. Again, I'd say the first one was, uh, I will always love you. So they know I will always be there for them. Yeah. Uh, I wrote uh, to them about religion. I'm like, you know, as long as you're in the household, we you know we, we, we have church about and folks and that kind of thing. But once you're on your own, you got to make your own decision about who you're going to follow. Yeah. That was one of them. Um. Gave him some advice from my father uh, that he had given to me. My last one was called the, uh, I think, the Arsenio effect or Arsenio dilemma, yeah. and that that was based off of Arsenio Hall's show. When I was yeah. when I was younger, I would watch his show, but his show came on late at night, eleven yeah. or eleven thirty. Well, yeah, right. And I was going to bed late, and it was affecting. I was in grad school, so it affected my uh, work in school. So I said, I had to make a decision. Am I going to watch him or <laughs> am I going to get some sleep and get my work done? Because he's already succeeded. I let him watch you. <laughs> yeah. So I made that decision. I was going to, I was not going to watch him at a uh, certain point. And of course, we didn't have the DVRs and, the, and all those kind of recording devices when he was on. Yeah, yeah. I was on his show once. Oh, um, really? It was like an accident. I was hosting the world famous Apollo Theater. 
And this guy came up. I think he was a plant from the Arsenio Hall show. And he did the Cab Calloway. Hotty, 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 ho. Uh-huh. And of course, he did a terrible job. He got booed off the stage. So Sandman came out and ran him around. He came around the other way and got parked in. So I said, what made you want to do something like that? He said, wow, well, uh, uh, whatever he said. But anyway, a week later, it was on the Arsenio Hall show. So he <laughs> planted by the Arsenio Hall show. I still have that tape in the closet there. But yeah, so I... So you let Arsenio Hall watch you so that you can take care of your business. You right. just slept on it. And so that you can, you know, take care of your business. Now, you know, a lot of times when, when there's a divorce and there's a breakup in the family, um, kids don't take it well. What are some of the things you told them or shared with them about that? The first thing you share with your kids is, is not their fault. Because your kids are going to think that the reason mom and dad split up is because of our fault. And so you have to make sure and, and give them the counseling they need uh, as well. Uh, both my kids actually did go to counseling. Um, and that, that that's the that's the biggest. And, and it's just to show them that you're going to be there for them. Yeah. And the other thing is never say anything negative about your, your spouse yeah. to you, your children. Mm-hmm. No, I, I know how it works. I understand. I understand. So how are they doing today? Children are doing fine. Uh, my oldest daughter is now uh, 21. She's in college in Columbus. Uh, All right. And doing some other things uh, on the side up there. My youngest daughter is 18, just turned 18 last month. And uh, she should be graduating from high school in uh, May. She applied uh-huh. for 15 colleges. She's been Woo. accepted at every single one of them. All and right. So now, now the negotiation start. How much money are you going to give? You really want there to you go. <laughs> I, I like I like when that happens. I, yeah. All right. Who wants my daughter? How much are you paying? What do you have? What are you offering? And it's not just financials. It's uh, all the other benefits that come along with it. But as right. long so as they, right now she's loving how. they get that full ride, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So you've done your job, but you know it doesn't stop there. You're going to continue to do your job, right? You know, one of the things I did was I put put aside money for that 529 plans. So uh-huh. uh, if the uh, colleges come up with enough, we I told them you'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, and, but that's how everybody else does it. They get their tuition paid for, everything paid for. So and when they get out, they're not broke. They don't right. have a financial burden. They don't have to pay back bills like so many of us had to do. That's how other people do it. So all that money that you put away for them, they can use that for something else. When I when I came out of college with my doctor degree, I had uh, no debts. I had a paid off car and a paid off mobile home. <laughs> how does that feel? Oh, that felt good. <laughs> so now, do you recommend the 529 to a lot of the parents who are dealing with their children right about now? And how early should you start? I think you should start early. I'm talking about once your uh, children are born, I would say if you can't start then, by the time they're about three or four, start putting the money away for them a little because yeah. it adds up over time. And it's it's a tax deduction in a lot of states. And if they don't use it, you can use it yeah. yourself. The magical compounding. Right. Uh, so... You start off, and, and there are a lot of institutions that do it. There are a lot of banks that could get you into the 529, right? You can do it through uh, the banks, uh, through some fin- your financial institutions. I actually did mine through the state of Ohio. And yeah. uh, I had one that was guaranteed. So they actually sent my money back. I would have had a year of uh, <laughs> college uh, tuition, room, and board guaranteed for, for about for four years uh-huh. for about $35,000. <laughs> so what do you recommend that they do with all this newfound money if they don't have to pay a, a tuition? Well, the, the, it's not newfound money because the money in a 529 plan is only uh, usable for college or education right. pursuits. Right, right. So if if they, uh, I can use, I can transfer it to someone else or I can take it out and use it myself if I can pay, I think, a 10% penalty, tax penalty. You know why I said newfound money? Because if you if you find out that you have to pay that tuition, then mm-hmm. the money, you know, <laughs> then you have to use that money for that. But if right. you find out that, you know, you got a free ride and they, they got you covered like a blanket, 
then that money is there for something else. Right, right. That is newfound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's the only reason why I brought that up. Yeah, you're right. You do have to plan for that, though. But in the event that, you know, that you brought your kids along the way and they, they got it all together and all the colleges are fighting over them and uh, and, and they're going to give that get that free ride, then, you know, you do have that money on the side. There you go. You did your job. And that's what you, you want. Prepare. <laughs> prepare before you get there. Yeah. So what is one thing that the reader should take away from um, just just name one of the books? What should readers take away from the book that uh, that stands out in your mind? So with my book, With the Father's Love, 52 uh, Weekly Letters to My Beloved Daughters, the takeaway is that is uh, communicate with and love your, your children. Yeah. That's the biggest takeaway I would have from that one. And uh, I would tell you the the biggest question I keep getting from people is where's the one for the boys? You know, like I don't have any sons. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody else can write that book. Well, no, well, you may be able to write it too. That could be next. I also had one. Can you write a book for daughters who didn't have a good relationship with their fathers? Uh -huh. <laughs> so everybody has these ideas about books for you to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, once you start writing, it just keeps it's like, a, you know, you learn how to ride that bike. You want to get back on there and do it again. So you I think you have a few books in you. What was that? So I think I, ha I think you have a few books in you. OK, thank you. As far as the one on financial freedom, yeah. Um, after writing the book, I came to realize that the book more targeted someone who was uh, more professional, coming out of you know going they were going to college or got a career like plumbing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the thing I've been thinking about is what about this, the families that are struggling, the undereducated folks who are struggling, not in good school systems. They, they can get the basis from it, but uh, how do we help those folks advance? That's That's been one of the things on my heart right now. Is all of this information on your website? Uh, no, I have not. I have not need to update it to put the financial freedom stuff on there. Yeah, put that on there. So we can yeah, I need to update that. I need to update that information. Yeah. So the stuff that we missed today, we can go in there and get. Right, right. Well, listen, thank you for sharing your time with us and thank you for putting that out. And uh, God bless you and the family and the daughters and everybody. Yeah, thank you again. Happy New Year. And uh, make, make sure you encourage everyone to at least get a will so we're not like uh, Coolio and Aretha Franklin and a variety of other celebrities we've heard in the past. Yeah. Thank you so much. Dr. Edmund H. Moore, author with The Father's Love and Financial Freedom. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Whew. All right. That's about all the time we have for today's show. We appreciate you and thank you for tuning in and checking it all out. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. Always remember this. What you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice. Let your choice control the chooser. Remember, whether you say you can or you can't, either way, you're right. So say you can and you will. I'll catch you another day, another way. I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. I love you all. Peace.